Hello, this is a question posed by Fion, Fions. Um, he asked the question, how do you know when to loosen and when to tighten the belts? And I'd like to apologize for him. I didn't. I, I gave him a, a sh not a very good response, and uh, so I'm sorry. Sorry with that response, and uh, yeah, oops, apologize. Um, so how do you know when to uh, tighten, when to loosen these belts? So this is one of the examples he, w he wanted an idea on, or they wanted an idea on. So when I look at it, I look at two things mainly two things, right? I look at this main peak that we expect to see around 50 hertz, and I want to see if these, how even these things guys are. The other thing I look at is this extra stuff over here. So, this one's a kind of a, we know that this peak right here is about 0 0.4 hertz out, so we need to tighten this belt. Okay, when we tighten, that's the B belt. When we tighten the B belt, one of two things is going to happen over here, and actually going to happen, right? Either B is going to go up, and it's going to go over a little bit, or A is going to shoot up, and all these spikes here are going to shoot up too. They're going to get higher. Or what's going to happen, that's going to be one. One is A is going to shoot up, and these are going to shoot up. The other thing that could happen is this alpha one will move over such that we'll get closer to zero hertz delta, and these peaks here can move down, and they'll kind of calm out. A third thing that can happen is that this will move up and, and clear this out, clear the delta out, but this will still get higher. This case right here is kind of, this one's a kind of a questionable case, because if I tighten this up, I may, f I may do the first situation where this peak goes up. And I, I say that because this is so much higher than the, than the B belt underneath. So what, what does this mean? It can mean a couple things. It can mean that your belts are already out of whack. Um, so you've, you have one belt significantly tighter than the other one. And it's just, it's just pulling it in, right? Because if we remember... Um, uh, let me see. Can I do this? Okay. So we remember here we have our... XY joint right here, and we have a belt coming this way, right? And then we have the other belts coming this way, right? So right here, it kind of goes like this. And this is our XY joint, and it couples the belts together. Let me just right, do the other side, right? Couples the belts together this way, and then this way kind of thing. So if I pull this side tighter, this side's going to get tighter also, right? Because I'm pulling it, because they're coupled. So... It's not going to get as tight. So if I pull this one super tight just to begin with, this belt here is going to start off somewhere around here as a starting point, where we want the belts to start off here, which is, once again, why we go back and forth. So let me clear this all out, kind of explain my reasoning here. Oh, let's bring that back in. Lost the picture. Okay, so if we, if we look at the belts... Right, look at it again. If I do a little movement here, right, this is going to come up a little bit. It's just, it's just going to happen. It's going to rack it a little bit when we're tightening these belts. Then I do a little movement here. This is going to come in a little bit. Hopefully at the end of moving them back and forth, I'm still at the same spot, right? So I've, I've kept my, my x-axis perpendicular to my right. But if I make a big movement, and then I do a little movement... And then I do a big movement, and then I do a little movement, right? I'm now racked. So that's why, like, so an example of what can happen, and this is this is a little tricky part, is I turn this, say this is, uh, I do one and a half turns here, right? On this one to tighten it, and that gets me to here. Well, this one may be about here now. Then I do, let's say, I do another one and a half turns here. Let's, let's, let's just say some, I do one turn here. It's not going to get me, this is this right here, isn't equal, is not equal to a half turn. 
it's just some arbitrary time. I don't know how much it's, I haven't actually measured how much it comes in. So I get like this. So now I'm racked, oops, I'm racked this way. So I got a little bit here. So, but the belt tensions are reporting the same. And that's because when I pull it in, I pulled it in a little bit. But when I run the graph, so that like my tension tool, like the PF makes tension tool, will say they're the same. But when I run the graph, I get something off. And it could be because of this, right? Even though the tension's the same here, they're actually racked. And what it's measuring, the ADXL's measuring, when it does it, it's measuring the diagonals, right? So it's going one way, and then it's going the other way. It's measuring this little bit of, of well, let's just call this here, this bit here, which would be our, like, our delta, which would be, I can't draw on this thing, delta, right? So that's what it's doing. So when you see something, let me get rid of all this junk. All right, when you see something like this, that's it's, it's kind of a, you got to try something to fix it, right? So what I would do in a situation like this is, is I would say, okay, let's tighten B by a half turn. Actually, probably a quarter. Here, this would probably be a quarter of a turn. Let's see what this does. Does it go up? It should go this way, right? If it stays the same, or if it doesn't, if it moves up or whatever, we want to see if these guys here will calm down. Right? If they go up like this, then it's best to start over because you're going to have to, one side, probably the A side, has too much tension in it already, and it's, it's best to start over. If you see something like this happen, right, where this guy goes up like this, after you've moved it this way, you, know, you tighten it, once again, a quarter of a turn, let's say, and you see that guy goes up, Okay, well, that's telling you that your both your belts are probably tensioned too much. So I would start here, right? So do it, and you see this B happening here. What I would do is I would then reduce both belts, both belts, by one turn. Ex just even one turn. And see if that doesn't bring these peaks here down, right? Because you want to bring these guys down. So what... what that's kind of different situations. Now, if I see this guy, let me get rid of all this. Oop, did it again. If I see this guy go up higher, and these go up higher, and these go up higher, right? When I try to tighten this belt this way, right? So that's a quarter turn on B, quarter turn on B, right? What this telling me is, is I'm I'm not helping the situation. It's 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 racked, probably belt induced racked already. So, what I would do here is I would just loosen the belts and start over, right? Because you're going to keep trying. You're going to be like, okay, I did tighten a B quarter, but if you go back to this, right, this thing here, and all we did was a quarter. So we'll call this a quarter turn B. A quarter turn on B. Nope, that's the wrong side. Right here, this is a quarter turn on B. And what's actually happening is your A is too tight already. A is too tight. So that quarter turn B did this on that. So you thought, oh, it's too much. It's too much. Your A was already racked. You did a quarter turn B. It's still racked. But now you've done a little bit more here because they're, they're coupled. And you got a little bit more, so you're still racked. That's what, it, and it's too tight, which is why it's doing all this stuff here. So let's look at a different graph. Um, this one right here. What do we do here, right? Well, we got a lot of junk going on, but what we know, well, we don't know, but we know that. Well, okay. Let me stop saying we know. We can see that a belt here is really loose and b belt doesn't look none of this looks right none of this looks right right but i'm looking here i know there's a bunch of junk going on here so what i'm going to start with here is i'm going to say you need to tighten a belt we want to see what happens right? a lot of this is is cause and effect we do something we want to see what happens so what i'll say here on this one 
Oh, good God. Keep hitting Control-Z too much. Is I'll say, tighten A. Right? And t give A a good, I'd say a half turn. Right? Half turn A. And we'll see what that does. Will it calm this down? Right? Will it bring this up? What we want to see after that, after we do that turn on A, uh, let's get blue. We want to see A do one of these things. We want to see it meet, come in here at least. Right? It, it may not come in, so this is over the 50, usually we're around here somewhere. Um, it may actually bring it this way. But I want to see, I want to see some sort of peak here. Because that gives us, because at least we know, okay, we're in the ballpark. Now these, in this situation, these right here, may calm down. I doubt it. Um, but they may. This right here, even though these, these should not be indicative of chasing, belts, belt graphs in general should not be used to chase mechanical issues. It should be your input shapers. Uh, but you can kind of see some mechanical issues potentially in this, in these graphs. Uh, but here, I would want to look at what, what my Y and X, all, both of these, what my Y and X input shaper look like. They're really high in the power spectral density. Um, and they're not supposed to be there. I'm going to start looking at, for this one, I want to see, do I get 125 hertz in uh, my Y input shaper? If I get it in my Y input shaper, it's going to be tap. Um, something hitting the tool head, so tap, generally tap, or, um, a second right here, cable chains, cable chains hitting the tool head, something like that is what I'm looking for, loose screw in the tool head, um, loose screw on the X, X, uh, carriage attaching to the X linear rail, mm -hmm. I'm looking for something on your input shapers to show this. This here, I'm looking again, I'm going to be looking at this same, around this same frequency in your input shapers. Does it show up? Because you can get this, you can get, let me close all this, let me try this again. Boop, 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 boop. a lot of typing. Okay, you can get, we'll, we'll do it over here, a double hump on your belts. Well, that's a, that's a horrible double hump. All right, you can get a double hump in your belts, and that's, once again, that's the coupling of the XY joint. Not a big deal, right? It's acceptable. Um, so this could calm it down, and this, this could eventually, if we use this as, as both belts, it could be doing something like this. I mean, it's a little, a little high, but it could eventually calm down to that. This is a little high for that frequency. I would expect if I get the double hump to be in this range here, but it could, right? If, if a belt gets tightened a bit, it could happen. Um, but because it's not happening right now, I would want to see what's happening in your XY joints for both of these. And it, do they correlate with something happening in them? Um, if you give me this graph and you're, XY joints look horrible too. We're going to start back at this graph and we're, as I said, we're going to get this peak going up. Try and get peak A here and peak B to match here and then we'll deal with this. Uh, we can't deal, we got to get the belts right first before we do the input shaper. So that is kind of what I'm looking for and that's why I'm looking at them. Um, let me go back to the other graph. That's, that's the other graph. Now we gotta. I know I'm not using the optimal program for this. Paint is probably not the best, but it's what I got. So this one, I mean, this one's tricky, because you get, you're getting a good shape here, and you're getting something here. So I'd say t just to fix this, right? Once again, I'm just gonna reiterate: do it a quarter of a turn tighter on B to fix this, and hopefully get that good, get this value. Right, get this one to zero here. The, there's going to be a delta. On something like this, there's always going to be an amplitude delta, but we want the frequency delta to be zero. 
And then after after that happens, we'll take a look at this, and we'll run the input shaper x and y, x and y input input shaper, and we'll see if there's some sort of ghost, some sort of some sort of fingerprint on your x y joints, or I'm sorry, on your x y input shapers, to determine if this is a problem. Right, right now it. it if you correlate the betas and peak two, it's not a problem, right? It's all in the, the flight path. So right now we, we call this the flight path, right? You want your belts in it. Um, our belts are never going to be in it because there's an amplitude. This is a huge amplitude difference. You can get that just the nature of our printed parts and the nature of our uh, non-high precision machined or high precision parts such as the extrusions um, and all the all the printed parts, it's okay. It's okay to be up here. You want it here, it's okay. You're not don't don't kill yourself trying to always get everything in the flight path. But what we see here with this, if we correlate it to this, we see yeah, there's a bunch of peaks here, but they're in the green zone. So we do want to check the input shapers to see if there's a problem. But this so I know I'm going off topic here. How do I know whether to tighten or loosen it? And it's kind of, a lot of times it's just a guess. Maybe like this one right here, I'm going to look at this. I'm going to kind of guess what do I think is going to happen, right? Do I think it's going to, A is just going to shoot up? Do I think, so we have one, let's call it one. This is number one. One, A is going to shoot up and it's going to shoot up like this, right? Number two, let me switch to dark blue b can go like this b can come or b can come up more right and then these guys can shoot up so that's number two that can happen number three that can happen b shoots up and then this guy shoots up here that's uh number three and then number four that can happen is this guy shoots up, number four, and these guys, both of these things kind of calm down. That's number four. That's generally what can happen, and what do I think is going to happen? And on this one, I really don't know because these aren't so far apart that I don't think A is going to shoot up. So I think it, in this situation here, because of just like these are like that kind of like that weird zone in height in relation it's in relation to this peak here it's not in relation necessarily to that one well it's partially these peaks in relationship to these but it's also these guys in relationship to each other and where do i think they're going to go which one of these four scenarios do i think is going to play out i don't know uh that's why we do this and we see which direction it's going and from that we can then decide whether it's worth doing another say another quarter turn in b right or whether it's worth you know sometime sometimes it may be worth doing a hat or a quarter turn loose in a so this is a plus quarter this is a minus quarter a and seeing if we can't bring this guy back down right maybe tightening b isn't the answer maybe it's loosening uh a I'm trying to bring A down. So that's, it, I'm going to be honest, a lot of it's guesswork. A lot of it's just looking at these graphs enough and, and, and doing your own belt tension and seeing something like this and say, okay, what do I think I'm going to do? And, and running this test lots and lots and lots of times to kind of figure out or to see a pattern of, of how these belts react. Uh, so that's the long answer. And, 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 you know, for half the time I get it right, half the time I get it wrong, probably more get it wrong. Sometimes if you get a graph like this and your input shaper looks good, everything looks good, or let's say your input shaper looks decent or we just can't solve this belt, it's better to start over. It's it, it, Sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes, if you've made adjustments and you've tightened A somewhat, you, t you loosen B, you loosen A, you tighten, you keep loosening and tightening, eventually it's just better just to start over fresh on the belt tension. Uh, 
because you're just at that point you've even though I'm saying a quarter of a turn you're saying you did a quarter of a turn right we're not exact in this and those imprecision so maybe you did a quarter and a smidgen right and then you did another one a quarter and a smidgen well those smidgens add up to eventually if you do it enough times to eventually maybe being its own quarter of a turn or half a turn or who knows what so that is kind of how I go about this and and, and, and look at these belt graphs and say okay what needs to happen uh, I, I will reiterate a lot of times it's just doing the belts enough times screwing screwing up effectively because you can as long as you don't mechanically change anything right you're not swapping out parts and you're just tightening and loosening belts you can basically do this forever so you can un undo your belts or uh, loosen the belts don't fully undo them but loosen the belts retighten them you know and play around then loosen them back up and then tighten them back up and so because you haven't changed anything mechanical on the system as long as you don't change anything mechanical and start messing with screws and stuff like that you will be eventually be able to get back to where you started so i i i would say try it out you know intentionally belt induce rack your 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 gantry if you're inquisitive on on how to do this or how to look at these belts you know you can create this problem you can create these problems in your belts just by not tensioning them correctly so you can do that and then you can try and fix it make you know you can make it a game um it's a very frustrating game and I, I don't like playing it myself but sometimes we have no choice but to play this game so that's that's my my answer um for your nose uh once again I'm, I'm sorry if my initial response was was a little brunt uh so i didn't mean it to be uh but yeah hope this helps you and uh you know good luck